I'm losing the light really fast, so I'm going to have to make this really quick. This week, it's the Citroen C5X. This is just a sexier car all round than that C5 Aircross we did a few weeks ago. It's, it's beautiful. They haven't got that weird twin LED arrangement at the top like the Aircross does. This is just simplified and beautiful. The triple headlights are down below and they work really well at night. The auto function is just spectacular, but I just like the, the shape of this. I, I think they've really got it right. It's got the same drivetrain from the C5 Aircross, but it's got nicer back suspension. And we'll talk about that in a minute. I know this light's a little bit dappled. I hate doing videos late in the afternoon, but you can see this beautiful hatchback shape, this executive hatch shape that has made Citroen what it is today. The CX, now this is called the C5X and it reminds me very much of the CX. It also reminds me of the C6 Lanage. Sadly, big Citroen four-door coupes or four-door hardtops or four-door liftbacks, whatever you want to call them, never seem to do well. And that's a shame because this is a spectacularly beautiful car. And I think if you were following this car up the highway, you'd be thinking it was pretty special. The, the back's relatively simple. It's just a simple lift back with this huge spoiler and the Citroen chevrons. And there it is. Whoops, it didn't like the, there we go. And inside the boot is fairly spacious. and underneath a space saver spare. In the back of the Citroen, remember, I've got a sunroof in the front, so this little bit here is, there's a bit of a, comes down a bit, but where my head is, <laughs> this is kind of a little dip upwards in the back. There are three headrests in the back and you raise them, like, whoops, like so. Or you can just put that back in and put it down out of the way. And with that easy access system activated, the seat slid back to next to no knee room, but you can see there's much more knee room on the other side because that seat is where this one would normally be. There's also a little hidey hole, a couple of USB outlets and a rear vent. There's also a fairly low hump because of course this is a front wheel drive car. I'm in the front, I press start, everything comes to life and my seat slides forward. The steering wheel's not electric though, that's, uh, that's a manual job, so that doesn't slide out of the way. What, I've, what I'm presented with actually is a very big center screen. That's gotta be 12 inches or more, plus a probably seven inch screen in front of the driver and this massive head up display in front of me. I mean, it's really huge, it's about, this wide. Now that was something that was really sadly lacking in the C5 Aircross. I thought for a car of that price it really should have had, at the very least, a head-up display. And down here, hold on a sec, come over and look at this. I mean this is so Citroen. This is the head-up display height control. You turn the little knob to whichever thing you want to do, so it's either adjust the mirrors or fold the mirrors, or if you turn it straight forward, it's the head-up display up and down. I mean, that's just mad. Why not put it on a separate button? But I do like this here. Whatever this is, this just looks beautiful. It looks like fabric, but it's not. The steering wheel is nice and simple, very much like the C5X, but you'll notice over here on the cruise control, there is no active steering wheel button. I really like the effects they've given on this kind of piano black look. It looks really classy, but if you don't like piano black, you're going to hate this because it will get scratched. There's the drive mode button, the gear toggle, the manual button, and the park button. We've got dual zone climate control that of course has a sync function and an automatic function, 
and your usual one touch buttons along here. Some more of that gorgeous, whatever that surfacing is, that kind of hexagonal pattern chevron thing. And then up the top, this nice wide screen. One of the viewers asked why I always come up this road and it's because it offers this great interaction between corners and car. This is an eight speed automatic and a front wheel drive. And of course Citroen was one of the first, if not the first front wheel drive car. I think it was the traction of on. It can get a bit twitchy. But I have to say, this is not twitchy. This is a much, much, much better drive than the C5 Aircross. I'm zipping down these corners now at the speed limit. The brakes are super sharp. And in fact, driving this reminds me of one of those old CXs, the ones that had the hydro pneumatic suspension. This doesn't, of course, have hydro pneumatic suspension. It's got pseudo McPherson struts at the front and multi-links at the back. And both lots of dampers have this progressive rate system going that Citroen bought in a little while ago. And it gives the ride a very mm, scrumptious feel. The ride feels very luxurious. It is very soft though, no one's going to pretend it's not. And the dampers are of course passive dampers, so they're not changed by the drive mode system it's as it came from the factory. Now, the other thing is the head-up display also has this massive map, huge. And in fact, I've never seen really a head-up display quite like it, and it explains why the driver's display is so small. Now, you can turn the head-up display off if you want. I got to 110 in a fairly leisurely time. Don't really care. I'm not in a rush to get anywhere. The one thing I did notice is that because I'm not really used to this car as yet, I keep accidentally putting it into neutral instead of selecting the drive modes, which is very annoying. So I'm going to look very carefully that I've selected in the right area, put it back in normal, and here we are cruising down the road. Now you can notice there's a little bit more noise, and now there's not. I was a little disappointed at first, I expected the cabin to be a lot quieter, but you know, it isn't. And the other thing is pressing the button on the end of the wiper stalk scrolls through the views for the driver. So it's asked me okay, and it's set the cruise control at 110. Australians haven't yet accepted a large car with a small engine. And it's probably why our car industry failed. Because all of our big family cars had big family engines and they were terrible on fuel. Terrible. This 1.6 turbo petrol is brilliant on fuel. And it's showing me that I've got a range even now of 660 kilometers. The other thing that I like about the steering wheel is it's CX reference down here at the bottom of the steering wheel, this big silver bar. The original CX, of course, had just one spoke, and that's just a little gentle nod to that. This doesn't have any of the fancy things like parking aids and so forth, but it does have a very good 360 degree view camera despite its size, is incredibly easy to get in and out of parking spots. I've done about um, 200 kilometres ish a little bit more, and it's really been a pleasure. I, I love this car a lot. I was not so enamoured with its SUV system. I didn't dislike it, I just didn't think it was worth the money. This is also expensive, but there's something about me that really wants this car bad. The sun really is sinking now, so I'm not gonna to say too much more about this absolutely fantastic car. Gorgeous, beautiful, slinky, sexy. As always, hit like, leave a comment, and just over there to subscribe.